This is Today in Nashville, a celebration of the people, places, and things that make Music City a great place to live. Now your hosts, Kelly Sutton and Carol Sullivan. Tuesday, everybody. Our special guest co-host is our executive producer, Sarah Creel. Yay! Yay! Hello, How's it going? Oh, so great. So great. Here's what I love. So Sarah produces the show. She knows everything that's happening in the show, but she's also going to be sitting here reading all of the scripts. Right. So in your mind, you're going to be saying, we need to spade this up. We need to slow this down. <laughs> Here's I'm where controlling the it in my head, but in your head you're timing it out, right? Yes. Well, it's a di but it is a different role. I mean, like I'm now I'm just kind of like, ah, oh, well, somebody will tell me how long I've got. I think, <laughs> right? <laughs> Danielle's in there. She's got She's this got under it. control. Yeah. No worries whatsoever. So uh, Paul and I went out to eat last night, yeah. and the Vandy game was yes. on every screen around us, and I was really, I was having a hard time. My hands were getting sweaty. And it kept looking at the score, and we left before it was over. Well, so we have been following it, but it's the, they're in the College World Series, which broken down is a little different than normal MLB World Series, but yeah. we're going to try to go with it. So yeah. last night, it didn't go as planned. No, they dropped game one to Michigan, seven to four. They are now in a must-win scenario. So if you want to bring home that national title, you got to win here on out. Okay, so game two of the three-game series is tonight at 7 on ESPN. Yes. So we're wishing them good luck. They've yes. got to win this one and the next one to win it. So, and, yeah. Gosh, that was the thing. We were trying to figure out, okay, they haven't lost. They're still in it. But right. if they lose, they're not out of it. So, right. But they can't lose another right. one. Exactly. So this is it. What was the first car you ever owned? Do you remember? Um, okay, so the first car that I was like that I ever got to drive, it wasn't technically mine, was an old Toyota Corolla. <sighs> and now I drive a Toyota Yaris, which is not very different. So... Kind of the same. Yeah, kind of the same. But I used to drive an old pickup truck that was like a really old standard Toyota Tacoma that I loved. Because yes. the clutch really like didn't work very well anymore. So I'd kind of just like just grind the gears till you found it. Yeah, move things around. I loved that. Grind it till you find it. Right, That's what right. my dad Actually, used to say. Actually, I brought it in for an inspection and I said, Where should I park this? And the, <laughs> the mechanic said, The junkyard. <laughs> no, like, he cool. did not. <laughs> yep. Oh, yep. Okay. So mine was uh, Oh gosh, it was a, a little Nissan, a Nissan Pulsar. It was red. Ooh. And I, yes, I was in love with that car. Oh, I bet you felt really good. I in that car. really thought I was all the things. Yeah. You I, were and all it the was things. and it was a standard yeah. sh shift too. My yeah. dad made me get a standard shift so my friends couldn't borrow my car. Oh, that was a good idea. Because they didn't know how to drive it. Yeah, you gotta learn to drive a standard. Yeah. It's, a, it's a good thing there to know. There you go. All right, so this lady in New Jersey loved her first car. She's now been reunited with it more than a decade I later. Love this. 1975 B. Beetle. It's a beautiful purple color. This is Amanda Dorsett. She says she drove it in high school. Okay, so she's actually owned 11 Volkswagen since she owned this car. But when she went home for the holidays, a friend tipped her off <laughs> that her old bug was for sale. It still has her name Look on it. Her. She had to pay $400 Worth and it. a little bit of begging, but she got the car back. I mean, the decal's still on it. Mm -hmm. She says she's going to, I think, redo it now, right? Yeah, she said she's restoring the car before taking it back home. She said that the title is still in her mother's name. So she doesn't even think that, that like, I don't think that anyone's really done much with it since she gave it away. I so wonder why she, I love that. if it was still in her mom's name, why did she have to pay for it? I'm very confused by the whole thing. Yeah, I know. You know who did that? Alan Jackson's wife. You said that. Alan Jackson's wife found the, I think, I think it was a Mustang. I can't remember exactly, but there was an older car that he loved, and she found it I and had it brought back for one of his special birthdays. If you've got like a cool car yeah. that's really fun, I don't need the Toyota Corolla that I used to right. drive. Pretty sure the <laughs> Nissan Pulsar. is a little bit better. <laughs> Mine probably caught on fire at some point because I think there were a fire hazard. <laughs> that and the this Fiero. Do you remember the Fiero? Oh, All yeah. the Fieros caught on fire, so <laughs> it's probably Those are gone. <laughs> it's burnt up in a junkyard somewhere. Okay, sometimes you look at old cookbooks, like older ones from 30s, 40s, 50s, yes. and you're like, what were they thinking, okay? An editor at The Atlantic found one of these, and the recipes were really out there. All right, she posted them on Twitter for all of us to enjoy. Mm. Okay, please don't freak out, but I've had this. Oh, The Coca-Cola salad. You know, this one actually sounds probably the least gross. Okay, so it's Jello, cream cheese, orange Jello, by the way, right. cream cheese, Coca-Cola and chopped nuts. I swear to you, I had this when I was little. It was at like a, a pitch in at our, you know, Baptist church because that's what we did. Such a good little salad. Somebody right there. brought Coca-Cola okay, salad. Okay, here's the next one: a Florida salad, avocado, mayo, and oranges. 
They go together quite nicely. Don't That's forget the cottage and cheese! And the lime gelatin. Mmm, <laughs> that just screams <gasps> summer delight right there. Cottage cheese, so mayonnaise, gross. avocado, lime gelatin. It's all the things I want in my nice, healthy Florida salad. All right, I think this one takes the cake. This is the white salad. So you got marshmallows, pineapple. I'm on board with all of that. Uh, plain yeah. gelatin, cold milk, scalded milk. Oh. Heavy cream almonds. and blanched almonds. Not no. that's. I mean, it's not terrible. It's but just, then you put it on a bed of greens. Mm. And then mm. some greens. So put some midtime greens. Need those vitamins. Mm. Put it right there. <laughs> Disgusting. Okay. So this is moving on from salads. We're talking mac and cheese. Okay? Oh, yeah. The internet is divided right now on how to cook it: creamy or crumbly, baked in the oven with breadcrumbs, or put on the stovetop. Oh gosh. I don't know. I, I'm really torn here. Okay, people are really passionate yeah. about this. Over the holidays, the mayor of Atlanta tweeted a picture of her baked mac and cheese. Folks tore it apart. She got more than 900 comments. Sto that looks delicious to it me. It really does look good. Um, Stouffer's even trolled her, tweeting, we're here for you next time, Keisha. What? <laughs> All right. Honestly, I, I think it just is that great debate. What is it? Let's settle it once well, and for but all. But we were talking about this earlier. Yes. And you said you were like, well, I kind of like both sometimes. I do like both. Like, I love the pimento mac and cheese from Hattie B's. It's creamy. It's delish. Like, delicious. Yes. But when I make it at home, I bake it, and I actually, like, make breadcrumbs out of these, like, like sourdough pieces. Look at you, and Betty Crocker. Them, okay. And they're really good. And then my yeah. grandmother used to sprinkle um, saltine crackers all over the top and bake it. Wow. And so it was, like, salty and crunchy. I think that they're, I think they're two different things. I think one is mac and cheese, and then one is more like a casserole. Right. They each hold their place in the food world. Let's not let's divide. Not, let's not discriminate, people. Let's unite. Let's bring that cheesy goodness yes. together. Can we please? Yeah. Speaking of cheesy goodness, today is the day that Franklin has been waiting for. I know I was because I walked by at least four Ooh. times. It still Thank wasn't you. open. Now it is open. The Grilled Cheesery in downtown Franklin open for business. This is their second location, y'all. They also have that amazing food truck that we love. I get excited whenever I see it. The new location has some fan faves. Yeah. Like pimento mac and cheese. I'm on it. Make your heart melt. Yep. Where you can customize your grilled cheese. Yes. They also have a milkshake bar where you can have old fashioned floats and milkshakes. Check out the mar merch that we got. Look at this. Look at all this. Get your grilled cheese Oops. on, y'all. Get your grilled cheese on. Whoa, sorry. There you go. This sorry, is Mark. so cute. cute we love, cute, cute. we love um, Crystal and all of the things that they're doing. Look at this hat. With the grilled cheesery. Will you take a load of what's going on I right here? I Look know, at this. I love it. This is this is a lot. I happen. feel like the grilled cheesery wouldn't discriminate on um, creamy or crumbly mac and cheese. I you know like what? They, they you know can you can all. have it your way. The grilled cheesery downtown Franklin. Go see them. I'm very pumped that they are there because I spend a lot of time. I know you do.